Hey everyone, Skull902 here today, and this day is a very special one to me. It is September 23rd, 2017, which marks the 15th anniversary of the release of probably my most nostalgic game of all time. Of course, you can see it in the video. Uh, that game is Star Fox Adventures for the Nintendo GameCube, made by Rare. Now, like, this game here is so special to me because while most uh, Star Fox fans would find it to be a polarizing game, you get a lot of people who like it, you get a lot of people who don't like it. Uh, this was me and my family's first sort of uh, experience with the series, so we didn't really have uh, that, oh, well, genre shift, what's this going on, going into it, and uh, I think it helped us like the game for what it is, and I honestly think it's one of the best titles on the GameCube. It's really, really great. It's just a wonderful time, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to recollect and remember on uh, what exactly made the game special to me and my family, and hopefully you guys enjoy my rambling. I'm gonna put some uh, music in here to make it a little easier to listen to. So, uh, what exactly made this game special? Well, I think that uh, it was our immersion into the story, uh, first of all. Uh, my older brother was the one who uh, played the first playthrough of this game, uh, and we were just so wrapped up in it. Uh, it was amazing. It was just me, my little brother, and obviously the older brother playing it at first, and then uh, my little sister got interested, uh, our mom got interested, which was very surprising because she didn't really show a lot of interest in video games, uh, and it was also an escape from a really bad personal time that we were going through in late 2002, early 2003. Uh, so it it was just like one of those things that we heavily anticipated every day. Just going and being like, well, you know, Star Fox Adventures, we've got that, you know. I, I don't really know how to explain it. It just helped us through a very difficult time in our lives. So, yeah, let's... Let's go back and uh, discuss how uh, we originally got into the game. I don't exactly know how, because I wasn't there, but um, I guess there was a demo disc or something that Blockbuster was uh, renting out, and we had gotten the GameCube uh, earlier that year in April, and my older brother was interested in the game, and he rented the game all the time before it came out. Uh, so, you know, uh, he was... Uh, playing Crystal's section a lot, uh, and, like, only got to Fox's section once, uh, before, uh, we bought the game. Or, I should say, before my mom bought the game for him. Uh, I don't know if that was on launch day or if it was a few days later. It was definitely in September, though. That's what I remember. So, uh, he starts playing the game and getting more so into the story and uh, it was the same kind of feeling that me and my little brother felt uh, when we watched him play Super Mario World except that was on a much lower scale this one f felt so much bigger and so much more important because it was I guess because it was 3d and you know there was voice acting and all that and there were actual story elements too which uh, in my personal opinion I, I still think that the story was uh, pretty good uh, it it kind of ended on a cop out, unfortunately, but you know at least spoiler warning for a 15 year old game. At least they gave a decent enough explanation for why Andros came back instead of just half assing it, uh, and that was really more so Nintendo's fault than Rare's. But you know uh, whatever. So uh, we were really wrapped up in the story, uh, really wrapped up in my brother's gameplay. And it was just, it was just fun to watch, you know, you, like, some people might say that it's not fun to watch someone else play a video game, and I think it really depends on the game. Uh, and Star Fox Adventures was that, like, right kind of game that was just a really nice, relaxing time to sit down and, uh, you know, experience it with someone else. Uh, at least that's what 
eight-year-old me thought and what I believe from my memories. So we were watching him play the game, and uh, eventually, as I said, it, it grew uh, from us three boys to my little sister and our mom. Uh, and we were hopping around uh, between a few houses around then, and we didn't have a memory card, so every once in a while, uh, you know, when we moved, uh, essentially, we we would have to start the game over again. Thank God <laughs> that in around November or so, uh, my mom finally got, uh, uh, like, a black... 256 uh, block memory card for the GameCube. That was that was like a godsend. It really was because we were finally able to save the progress. And uh, after the, after that was pretty steady progression uh, that my older brother made until the final boss, which took him two months to beat. But you know whatever, he was nine, so you can't expect like the greatest gaming skill from a kid. Uh, but no nah, man, like. Uh, it w it never felt tedious though. Uh, throughout those two months, it was always heavy anticipation, and that was the sort of feeling that I think we all had throughout the entire story of the game. Heavy anticipation: what is going to happen next? Uh, what creatures are we going to run into? You know, uh, who are the bosses going to be? How is General Scales going to go down? What's Fox going to do next? That's what you want in a story. You want people wondering what's going to happen next, and. Uh, I think that Rare did a good job just kind of having us build up that anticipation. And, you know, uh, even though we were kind of disappointed, and it still is, no doubt, a disappointment that uh, there was no direct confrontation with General Scales. Like I said, you know, I still consider it good. Uh, we still enjoyed the hell out of it back in the day. So Rare did a wonderful job. Rare did a wonderful job on the story. Especially back then. Yeah, so it, it just didn't feel tedious throughout those two months that my brother was battling Andros. Uh, and he, you know, tried to learn the strategy and everything. It was, it was quite an interesting thing to see. We had a strategy guide, but it actually didn't cover what happens after General Scales gives up the uh, sixth Cruzoa Spirit. So there was, like, no telling what was going to happen afterward. Uh, which, you know, it's cool when you, when you wonder and you don't know because you, you didn't see it in a strategy guide. So yeah, he battled the boss for two months, as I previously stated, like 4,000 times. And, uh, you know, we, uh, had jumped over to my grandma's house, where I am right now. I am in the very room recording this right now, uh, as where my, uh, older brother beat the game. One night, it must have been like two in the morning in February 2003, uh, where we were all huddled around a little uh, VCR TV combo, and he got the last hit on Andros, learned the strategy, in reverse order of course, uh, and beat the game. And it was, I would say the mood was celebratory. We celebrated. It must have annoyed the shit out of our grandma, <laughs> uh, but we, we were so happy that the story was, you know, he he beat the game, and I think it was the first game that he ever beat, and uh, it was just the conclusion to this this ride that we had been on for so many months. It was amazing. It like I I can't even properly describe what we were feeling at the time. I just have to keep saying it was amazing. It was amazing because it really was, and we were so happy. It was it was fucking awesome. It was just completely awesome, uh, and just, oh yeah. So, uh, instead of gushing about that more, I'm going to gush about other things. Uh, I talked about the story. Uh, the gameplay, I haven't beaten the game yet. Surprising, I know. But, uh, you know, I've, I've played a fair bit of it, and I think that it plays really well. You know, some people have problems with the R-Wing section, like, oh, it was rushed and put in there. I, I didn't think that the R-Wing sections necessarily played bad, but then again, I haven't really played the, the later uh, R-Wing levels, so i got no idea. The adventure gameplay, though, I mean, it's perfectly fine. And I'd say, you know, if, if you like the sort of uh, Ocarina of Time style, then the game would be worth checking out. In terms of the graphics, 
I think it's the prettiest game on the GameCube. That game, like, if if there were some filters put on it, like you can do in emulators, that game's graphics would stand up today. Rare did a fantastic job with the design on that game. The graphics were absolutely top-notch beautiful. All the environments, places like the Ocean Force Point Temple, Cape Claw, uh, Krizoa Palace, Snowhorn Waste, Thorntail Valley, good god. The whole game was beautiful, no matter the aesthetic. Even some murky place like uh, Lightfoot Village, you know? Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. And uh, I've, I really gotta give my uh, applause to the graphic designers for that. Wonderful job they did. Uh, and possibly uh, one of the best aspects of the game, if not the highest quality aspect of the game, the music. I'm not sure who composed it. Wikipedia says Dave Wise, um, but I'm not entirely sure about that. Uh, I've looked into it before. It, it seemed kind of uh, iffy on who uh, actually composed the game, but whoever it was, you know. Rare's been known for good music during their Nintendo era, like uh, Donkey Kong Country 1 and 2 especially. I wouldn't, I, you know, I'm not surprised that the game has supremely awesome music. I absolutely love it. I have uh, two tracks in a uh, new playlist that I made about uh, relaxing water music because that seems to be a recurring thing in video games. Um, I'll be sure to make that playlist public and uh, share it in the video description. Uh, it, it's two of my favorite songs in the game, uh, Cape Claw and The Ocean Force Point Temple, again. Uh, some others are um, the the little musical cue that plays when you meet up with the Kurzawa spirit, Kurzawa Palace itself. Uh, God, there's so many to name. Uh, Thorntail Valley again, or Thorntail Hollow. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot one of the places in the game. Oh, I love it so much. I forget where one place is called. Nah, it's it's fine. It's fine. I, I absolutely love this game and its music, as previously stated. But yeah, there's there's so many pieces of music that's that are like so amazing and great. You know, if you if you don't want to give the game a chance, please at least give the soundtrack a chance, because it is a top notch video game soundtrack. Uh, probably my favorite soundtrack of any game ever and uh, like Star Fox Adventures was so special to us all uh, when I when I found out in early 2005 that there was a sequel coming out you would not believe the anticipation at least that I felt I don't know about my brothers or anyone else in the family but I was hyped up for the sequel and it was the first time that I was actually anticipating a sequel to a video game pre-release uh, I, uh, I saw like an ad for it in GameStop. It was uh, Star Fox Armada at the time, I believe. Uh, and there was a case with, like, a couple R-Wings on it. And, like, I, I, I looked up stuff for uh, Star Fox Assault online. Like, I was really into this. The anticipation for the sequel was so great. The likes of which I have not felt since. For any video game. The closest thing I can think of is wondering what was going to happen after Sonic Generations. Uh, which ended up being, apart from Sonic 4 Episode 2, Lost World, and very disappointed. But it, that's aside from the point. This is about Star Fox Adventures. And I, I liked Assault 2, but not nearly as much. But, you know, that's that's the power that this game had. Uh, you know, that it, it did so well, in my mind, that, uh, you know, that I was anticipating the sequel that fucking much. <laughs> it was... It was amazing. I, ca I can't say anything else, but you know, aside from the fact that it was just amazing, and I love it to death. And you know, uh, I could ramble on and on forever about this game and what it means to me. But I think I've said uh, all I can say without like pre-writing everything first. And I hope that I didn't sound like I was being too rambly. So now I just want to give a few thanks. Just. To uh, show my appreciation for you know aspects of the game and whatnot, you know, uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank my family for uh, you know for having this whole experience together. Uh, my mom specifically for buying the game. Uh, I believe she got the GameCube earlier that year as well. The memory card. 
uh, you know, that, that was awesome. Thanks, Mom. The, uh, the game developers, I would also like to thank, because, I mean, holy hell, you guys made a really, really, really good game. Uh, the composer of the music, the graphic designers, uh, Nintendo for having them make the game, even though it was under very dubious circumstances. Rare as a company. I, th I think that's about it. So, in closing, I'll say, you know, Star Fox Adventures, very special game to me. I would be a bit, um, I don't know how to describe it, but it, it wouldn't be too right if I didn't briefly discuss the whole Dinosaur Planet thing. Uh, I'll save that for a more extensive video later down the line, but uh, as for right now, I think I think we would have preferred the game. Uh, it, it, you know, Dinosaur Planet did look better than what we got, but what we got was still fantastic. It was like a 9 out of 10 game that we got, so that's my short opinion on that. But yeah, I'm going to stop rambling now. I'm going to let you guys get on with your day. Hopefully you enjoyed my nostalgia trip back in time to uh, 2002, 2003. And I just want to say thank you to everyone who watched. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And have yourselves a wonderful day.